Hello everyone, I'm Adam Bradford, General Manager for D&D Beyond, and thank you for joining me for this week's development update and community Q&A session. We're gonna just jump right in, as always, today's lineup. We're gonna talk about our latest updates, talk about what's going on with the Encounter Builder, uh, share a little bit about Gen Con. We do have uh, the by presidents uh, coming from critical role of our party planning committee, in case uh, you didn't know that that's actually what they are <laughs> presidents of. Uh, we've got a data update, uh, DDB users by uh, geographic location. Uh, we got that question many, many times, so we're gonna uh, share that a little bit today as well. Um, upcoming, and then ask me anything. If you've got questions, post those into the channel with the word question in front of it. And we've got this magic spell-like technology that's gonna happen, uh, that's gonna uh, allow everything to, uh, to capture the questions. All right, let's see. Um, all right, uh, latest updates. Encounter Builder Alpha Refinement, we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Campaign updates. We have recently made it to where instead of characters inside your campaigns, it is actually uh, the player account that matters when it comes to content sharing. So uh, that was a change uh, that we were happy to push out. And we are working on the My Campaigns page, uh, character service, uh, trying to make sure that uh, everything is taken care of uh, to make sure that everything on the site runs smoothly. They're just flat out are millions and millions and millions of these characters and the growth has been greater than we anticipate, which is great, but we are making sure that we don't have any kind of hiccups as a result of that. And then content management, we do have an internal only build out for that right now. I don't think it's gonna be much longer before we get into uh, content management and uh, we're uh, you know, gonna be showing that off to the community. And then work continues on the mobile beta character sheet edging ever closer to having something that we can share with you in an alpha form there as well. So the Encounter Builder, we have completed putting in homebrew monsters at this point in time. So if you've been waiting on that and you're a subscriber, jump into the Encounter Builder and you can pull in your homebrew monsters at this point. And then the mobile experience uh, is definitely being much further refined at this point and uh, we're, we're in a pretty good spot with mobile. Couple of little other things that we wanna do there, but uh, for the most part, we're in a good spot. And then conceptualizing run and encounter, this is ongoing. This is the next step, we're very excited about that. And then getting ready to open this up for the public in beta. So, you know, transitioning over from subscriber only early access to the public being able to get their hands on the Encounter Builder. That also is edging up closer. So let's talk a little bit about Gen Con 2019. It was an incredible experience. I got to say hello to many fans out there uh, and always appreciate the, the words of kindness and the feedback and everything else that comes from these shows. So if you were there and you said hello, thank you for doing that. I, I genuinely do appreciate it. And as you can see, we were set up with a character creation station uh, outside of the Adventures League area. And then also we participated in some of the critical role shenanigans that were going on. Uh, so we were at the live show here, and this is where the presidential election that has been going on started to, or, or finally uh, ended. To, to tell the truth. So this is where the votes came in, the votes were tallied, and Liam O'Brien won over Sam Regal in a landslide. You know, it's like the pie chart. It was like Pac-Man about to chomp down on everything. So he won big time, but, uh, but ultimately as he won, he decided that he would never have made it to where he is without his good friend and hetero life mate, uh, Sam Regal. And ultimately with Sam, they are now forming the bi-presidency. 
The thing that they weren't quite clear on until the very end, though, was that we shared with them because of the misunderstanding that's been going on for months and months now. Nobody had the heart to tell Sam, but it is for president of the party planning committee. And so I think if you tune in to tonight's episode of Critical Role, you might get a little bit more information about what's going on with our by presidents of the party planning committee. So, uh, so yeah, I think that a little bit more info is coming out uh, in tonight's episode about that. So be sure to tune in. You were probably tuning in anyway, because I think half the world watches Critical Role at this point. So tune in just like you were already going to, and you'll find out a little bit more info about this saga, because I know that it has been something that has been gnawing away at you uh, to, to figure out what these two gentlemen would do with their newfound powers or lack thereof. All right, let's give away a legendary bundle. I think people like that typically. We like making people happy around here, so we're gonna do this. So in order to win this legendary bundle, you have to type in chat. It doesn't matter what you type. You can type anything at all. We just need to know that you are not a robot and that you are a real human out there. And so as long as you type something, we are going to be able to choose that randomly in five, four, three. All right, who do we have? DMW71, DMW71, congratulations, you won a legendary bundle, DMW71. Someone is going to be with you uh, either during or after the show to award your legendary bundle, uh, and uh, congratulations yet again on that. So let's talk about some data today. So DDB users by geo. So you can see that of our registered users, almost 70% of those registered users are coming from the United States. The United Kingdom and Canada are second and third here. Australia into Brazil has a very strong showing. Germany the Netherlands, Sweden, New Zealand, got the uh, the Kiwis out there using D&D Beyond, and then Norway. So this is the breakdown of about the top 10 different geographic locations. We are actually hoping to see an increase in some of the other regions of the world as we get going forward a little bit because we do have some foreign language translations that we are working on. So we're working on trying to make those available on D&D Beyond. So we've received those from Wizards of the Coast. So uh, so we're working diligently to try to at least, uh, you know, the first pass of that is going to be, um, you know, pretty direct and straightforward approach, which is to allow you to have access to the compendium content itself in the uh, the other alternate language, but uh, but so that that's kind of the starting point, and we're going to see how that goes, and we're going to see what kind of response we get to decide, you know, kind of where we go with it from there. But we do plan to add some additional language, uh, you know, book content to D and D Beyond in the coming months, and so it's going to be really interesting to see if that impacts any of this distribution as we go forward in the future. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. All right, upcoming, we've got an encounter tracker that is definitely in progress. This general feature system is something that uh, we're starting to look at. Um, we may even, uh, you know, it's a target. I'm not sure if we'll hit it or not, but we are looking at uh, blessings, for instance, um, you know, first here to give you a way to start tracking some of these other 
non-class feature, non-racial trait uh, information as we go forward. AL integration is something that's on deck. And then if you haven't heard by now, we have Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus coming in September. We're really looking forward to that. I am sure that if you've seen any of the previews, you have heard a little bit more about the uh, Infernal War Machines. And these things are really, really cool. And they are going to be included here. And this is something that we are going to be supporting. So uh, looking forward to all of that releasing and for you to be able to see just how cool or hot, I guess, because they're, they're kind of fiery, to be honest. Uh, these Infernal War Machines actually are. So we're working on that uh, coming too. I also would like to share that we have a Discord game coming and I did a bad and did not get, I did not actually get uh, the date here. So I'm going to ask Lauren to share with me what this actual date is maybe. So once she gets that through the delay, hopefully she's going to, going to slack me a message about exactly when this discord game is going. I'm just going to keep awkwardly looking at my instant messaging program here until it is typed. It's this Saturday, but it is not being broadcast uh, for this. But this Saturday, we're going to be playing a game on Discord. And we had a contest to see who was going to be included here. And so the three people that are confirmed for this game, Alt F4 will help, Fangirl Crazily, and Scuffin. Um, these are going to be participating in the game. And there's one other person that won, but we're still trying to confirm with them. Uh, but you can see the characters that are being played here. I'm really a fan of Granny Grimshank, uh, but we've got two half-elf bards and a halfling fighter and rogue. And so we'll see how that goes. I kind of want the fourth player to play a halfling fighter and rogue just for symmetry purposes, but we'll see what happens with this game. And if this goes well, and hopefully all signs point to, to uh, that happening, we will have more of these games in the future uh, for you guys to check out Avre, our uh, Discord bot, and, uh, and everything else. So Lauren Obocrazy Urban, our community manager, is going to be uh, coordinating that, and she's going to do more of this in the future. All right. Flew through it since I've had so many dev updates that I've not been here recently, flew through this where we can get to some questions. And so I just thought, let's see. So we've got plenty of questions here. Um, all right, let's see if this is working now. Let's see, you guys probably can't hear this, but Jonathan, do I need to, I imagine I need to do something here probably, right? So do I need to do that? Okay, perfect. All right. I think we got this working. Our regular producer, Will, is traveling this week, and so I have the excellent Jonathan helping me out today. Everybody say, hello, Jonathan, and we love you in chat. Make him feel very, very good about the fact that he is helping us out today. Um, so ultimately, let's see, is Han, this is from Dilla Gaffern, is Han a human swashbuckler and Chewie a bugbear barbarian? Big smiley face, the D is the big smiley instead of uh, ending a parenthesis. Love DDB. So I would say that if you were to approximate what those characters are, in the D&D system that's not quite made for their setting, I would say that those are pretty darn good choices. Thanks for your question. I play Dead People. I have a yearly master tier sub. It runs out in three weeks. The Australian dollar is very weak and I am poor. What is the sub discount code that you'll use to save me from this nightmare? Uh, it actually says night air but I think you probably meant Nightmare. Um, so I play Dead People. Unfortunately, we don't have any discount codes going for subscriptions 
um, at this point in time. So I wish I could help you a little bit more there, but we don't have anything going for subscriptions. It's actually something that we don't have discount codes set up to run with subscriptions yet. Um, Vox Kalina, anything on the horizon? Oh, I got to click it. Vox Kalina, anything on the horizon for expanding the encounter builder to include a tactical map builder or even fantasy map builder? So it kind of depends on what you mean by um, encounter builder here. So we're really looking at the encounter builder as the place where you build encounters. And that's kind of where that ends. So you build an encounter and then you move into something that allows you to run your encounter. And ultimately for that, uh, we do see that there will be a way, at least in the future, not as a first pass, but in the future for maps to be a part of that. And we are even hoping in the future that we're going to allow you to be able to build maps, but we don't have anything else that we can uh, cover on that front today. Hollows Bastion, any plans to incorporate Pathfinder 2 East or supporting another team to create a platform like D&D Beyond for Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Have you seen Pathfinder 2nd Edition and how complicated and detailed detailed it is. I'm not even necessarily saying that as a bad thing. I'm saying that as someone that would try to digitally support it and possibly pass out uh, just from even thinking about that prospect. Uh, no, we do not currently have any plans to do that, uh, but I wish Paizo all the best in their launch of their new edition of Pathfinder. Um, Malamber. Mel Amber 01, are there plans to move wagons and carts over to the vehicle section of the extras? We are actually going to follow Wizards of the Coast's lead on this. And so as soon as we start seeing that as something that they are doing, because technically, as it's written in the player's handbook, those are a different type of equipment. I agree with you that it, it makes a lot of sense that they come over there, but we are kind of waiting on Wizards of the Coast to clarify exactly how those things work before we do something that then has to be changed after Wizards decides what they're going to do. Um, a, mandal a mandolin? A mandolin. How do you work to overcome resistance to moving to digital tools from nostalgic reasons or just not willing to change? That's a great question. I think for D&D Beyond from the beginning, we have strongly desired, this is something that we talk about all the time, we've got to be very careful that we never remove the um, human interaction that makes Dungeons and Dragons or any role playing th the special thing that it is. And so we understand that people, uh, you know, like for nostalgic reasons or other reasons that could be equally as valid out there, they are not willing to change to any type of digital tool. And the thing that we like to do in those situations is to try to just simply edge them into it and demonstrate that the technology is not there to replace the good feelings. It's not even there to replace the nostalgia necessarily. It's there to simply mitigate the negative impact of rules at the table. So the positive impacts of playing, telling an interactive uh, cooperative story with your friends, uh, being able to take on the role of someone else and that this other character, being able to have all the inside jokes and, and the things that you laugh at, um, you know, while you're there at the table, that all those positive aspects will shine through clearly. So the technology is not there as a barrier. It's there to simply allow for the negative impact of rules to hopefully be mi mitigated somewhat and allow those other elements that really are going to key into the nostalgia that hopefully those things will just be more visible and clearer to the people that are playing. So that's, that's the way that I try to uh, gently encourage 
uh, along those lines. K Mander, which request do you get more often, dark mode or rebate codes for physical books or other? It's definitely uh, rebate codes for physical books uh, since day one. That has been uh, the number one thing. Uh, again, as I've explained many times before, unfortunately, uh, and, and I genuinely mean that as a, as a fan, unfortunately, uh, the business behind that and our licensing agreement uh, does not allow us to do anything of the sort. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll continue to see what we can do to add more and more value to the community and do the best that we can do for the community in the future. Hopefully I'm not going to lose my voice because, you know, I came back from Gen Con and those parties always have the music up just slightly louder than it really should be. And so you're not able to just simply have a conversation. You have to just barely yell. And so the barely yell really doesn't do favors for your voice. Grand Pyromania, considering Liam and Sam are now the presidents of the party planning committee, does this mean they're now responsible for making sure D&D games are scheduled and ran? D&D, &D, planning D&D &D parties, of course. Kappa, I don't think I was supposed to say the Kappa out loud, but I did anyway. And so ultimately, uh, no, like we're limiting the scope of their responsibilities as much as we possibly can. Tech Whipley 89, what would you like to see in an equipment manager update? I think bag of holding functionality is near the top of the list for most people. I don't know what all these games are that have bags of holding out there. It's almost like, you know, those are becoming like the new longsword or something that everybody just gets a bag of holding. It's supposed to be a magic item. It's supposed to be, you know, possibly dispensed with care by dungeon masters out there. But, uh, you know, I genuinely don't even think DMs want to worry with uh, inventory management. <laughs> it's so bags of holding. You get a bag of holding. You get a bag of holding. Everybody gets a bag of holding because then nobody has to actually worry about encumbrance. But yes, we understand that this is the way that the game is played. And, uh, you know, I even like to think of, you know, horrendous ways that you can, you know, overcome threats with bags of holding. And so we are going to make it to where bags of holding uh, will work at some point in the future. And really, this is just part of an overall container update where you'll be able to put things in normal backpacks or uh you know fanny packs if you want to homebrew a fanny pack you'll be able to put something in your fanny pack and uh, i want to be sure that if somebody homebrews the fanny pack of holding out there that you make sure that it is neon colored in some way it doesn't matter if it's yellow or pink or green but it has to be neon colored fanny pack of holding um, even that would be supported in a container update that we would eventually get to. No ETA yet, but it's certainly on our list and it's on the public roadmap. Uh, what is your, this is from Luke 0660. What is your favorite underrated 5E feature? It's a good question. What would be considered underrated? Hmm. Let's see, what would I, I've got to first figure out what I think is underrated, and then I've got to choose my favorite. Your simple on the surface question has thrown me for a spiral. I don't know what I should say here. Um, ultimately, I would say that, uh, you know, I actually think that Rangers get a pretty bad rap in uh, fifth edition. So let's say they are severely underrated. And I will share that I actually uh, think that several Ranger features are very interesting and useful. Um, and I think that they get drowned out by a lot of the people that have real issues with the Rangers. And I don't necessarily disagree with some of those issues, by the way, um, but I think that the Ranger class uh, is, is a little, is more underrated than it should be. It's unfairly underrated. Um, and, I, and I think that, uh, you know, Wizards of the Coast even has math to back that up. But, uh, but yeah, I think that the Ranger has an optics problem 
for sure in this edition. All right, uh, KaiUB972, will you be adding any support for creating normal, non-magical equipment as well as Eldritch Invocation support for creation? So the answer to both questions is yes. Uh, your follow-up being when will that be available is I don't know yet. So I went ahead and helped you out there and ask your ses uh, second question for you. But yes, both of these things are things that we absolutely plan to support. Uh, Mel Amber zero one again. Hello there. Is the monster builder on the horizon or are you waiting for the encounter builder to be done? So the monster builder is something that we are going to get into uh, with that team, uh, likely following the uh, encounter tracking work that we're doing. So again, encounter builder we, we see is the place where you build those things. And then the tracking is where you run those things. Uh, so whatever that management, uh, encounter management will be called, that is the thing that's being done next. And then as it stands right now, anyway, on the roadmap, the Monster Builder follows that. Ladred, any news on foreign language translations? Uh, so yeah, I gave a little bit of an update earlier on that. We have the translations themselves and we are trying to squeeze into our roadmap. Uh, that's a little bit of a drop-in. That's an example of, of how that works, for instance. So we have a roadmap and we have a plan and we know what we're working on in which order. And so as external circumstances change, in this case, Wizards of the Coast uh, providing foreign language translations to us, we have had to reassess the priority of the different things that we're working on. And foreign language translations are actually one of those things that we are moving up in the priority uh, that because we think there is a great deal of value here. And so I can't give a timeline of when, but I can tell you that we will be working on that this year. I don't know if we will finish this year, but we will be working on it. Um, so that gives you at least some idea of the priority level of foreign language translations. Aaron Lore, do you have the data on the most common monsters used in the encounter builder? We do have the data and that sounds like a wonderful way to summarize the alpha when we get to that point, possibly sharing during a dev update. So yes, I think that is a great idea. McEvan 66, would it be possible to add the background generation from Xanathar's Guide to everything to the character builder if you have it, of course? We definitely have it. And um, that is an example of some, um, I don't want to describe that. Um, some ancillary support to the core of character creation that we really, really want to include and just have not had time to do so yet. But it is something that is on our list and something that we want to make happen. Lone Ranger RN, what was the reason for starting the encounter builder with compiling all monsters and calculating difficulty rating? versus run and encounter elements, such as a simple approach to initiative HP tracking and monster stat block linking. As I personally feel, this would have been more useful tool to start the alpha with. I feel as though the encounter builder isn't actually usable and instead serves as a theoretical builder in its current state. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. Uh, but, uh, Seriously, <laughs> so we do have reasoning behind doing that. Um, we do feel like the Encounter Builder in its current state is very usable by a large number of people because many people need help in trying to make sure that when they're putting together the different compositions of creatures that it doesn't kill their party unnecessarily and it's not too difficult for their party. So we started as the lower hanging fruit, jumping into making sure that we provided an easy to use tool that replicates the math that is in the Dungeon Master's Guide for people to be able 
to organize these monsters. Now, having said that, I certainly agree that the next step, which would be running the encounter itself, uh, hit point tracking, status tracking, all of that is incredibly useful. And it is actually one of the reasons that we are doing it next. And it is so important that even throughout the alpha of the encounter builder, we have seen a recurring theme that people want that ability that you're describing there more than they want some of the bells and whistles that we plan to do for the encounter builder. And so, uh, you know, kind of getting back again to the original question, we had people asking us to build encounters just as much as we had people asking us to play encounters just as much as we have people asking us to do X and Y feature down the road. And so for us, much easier for us to put, you know, the first step as building the encounter, where now all of a sudden we have this entity that is called an encounter, and then we will go back and allow people to run that encounter and track all the information that is relevant to it. Bullen Bullen. Is the art you use on the left of the stream for the books or somewhere else? It's uh, typically all from the books. Um, occasionally, if we have some kind of other promotion going on, it might be something internal that our design team has created. But typically, 95% of the time, it is from the books. So uh, this week's art I chose from uh, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Let's see, Lone Ranger RN. Will the Encounter Builder have action links that will roll attack and damage automatically? So integrated dice rolling is something that we are working on and uh, something I've seen a little proof of concept for and something that's gonna be a lot of fun. But, uh, but yeah, it is something that's coming. Uh, again, that would very likely not be the Encounter Builder, it would be manifested in some way in uh, the, the management or tracking of that encounter. Uh, Vaxum, how about guest appearances from others at the DDB offices? Um, that is not really something that we can get into. There are a variety of factors uh, that kind of prevent that from happening. Uh, you know, legal reasons. Uh, we are working on secret things here. Our offices are not set up to really be segregated uh, where you have, you know, safe or clean areas where, you know, work is not happening and uh, things aren't being said. So it's not uh, very practical for us to host visitors at our offices. I get that question uh, a, a good bit, but um, yeah, unfortunately not really a possibility to visit our offices, but um, you know, that's not to say that you can't visit us at conventions or, uh, you know, there are other places around here that are, are, are not our office, but uh, nothing inside the office that uh, creates some challenges and liability that we can't take on. Mel Amber 01, are there plans to allow custom languages and music instruments like a piano or the native tongue of a custom race? So you actually can do custom languages now but you do have to do that on your character sheet. And I imagine you are probably talking about from a perspective of at character creation, can you know a character choose that language or when we're homebrewing a race, can we add a custom language to the homebrew race? And those are all things, again, that are on the list. We're not exactly sure where we're gonna get to them, but uh, they are things that we want to provide. Lord Ravenloft. As translations made in France aren't really well received in Quebec, are there any plans to have a version for France and one for Quebec? Uh, we're going to follow Wizards of the Coast lead here. So whatever Wizards of the Coast is providing to us per our license is what we will provide uh, for those foreign language translations. So uh, you're barking up the wrong tree is ultimately what I'm saying. You can uh, hit up a Nathan Stewart for that one and see what he says. Bearded Wizardist, can DDB put together some new user walkthroughs? 
I'm getting my parties to switch over and keep having tons of questions. A basic walkthrough for players and DMs would be awesome. We agree with this, and uh, we have been waiting for some of these other elements to materialize and be a little bit more dry concrete than the wet concrete than they current that they currently are before we invest in that kind of uh, walkthrough. Uh, but we do have some plans for that. And we even have some staff that um, we, we've kind of dog here to, to undertake that effort. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully I'll have more to share on that the back half of this year. Benay UK, you said you've played in Dragonlance before. Did you ever play any of the Heroes of the Lance? Uh, no, I did not play as them, if that's what the question is. Um, I've always very much so wanted to be my own character in these settings. And so um, I typically don't like taking on other characters. Um, I, I can do it a little bit in a superhero genre, maybe, because I feel like those characters have been so, um, they're already so, uh, so much of a caricature of themselves that, you know, I, I can get into their shoes a little bit easier, but uh, but when it comes to uh, to that, I uh, I just simply wanted to meet them instead of play as them. Will we be getting a homebrew shipbuilder? Yes, that's from Luke zero six six zero. We will be, um, and you'll be getting a homebrew infernal war machine builder and and all kinds of things. Uh, not exactly sure when that's going to happen, but it is on the roadmap. I play dead people. Uh, phase one for the encounter uh, tracker is phase one, right? Yes, or P1, yeah. So I answered it in expanding the acronym. Um, so how many phases are there usually? How long is each phase? Wow, you almost got me. Um, MC Evans, 66. Who do I contact for errors in uh, Dragon of Ice Fire Peak? Like places that say insert link here if if it says insert link here that's definitely on our side and you can just simply bring that up in um the forums or in discord and our content management team can take that if it is actual like typos misspellings that sort of thing then uh that is something that will have to be uh surface to wizards of the coast but if it says insert link here that's probably us so thank you for catching them and thanks for sharing dc lasser how great was my hat at gen con dc your hat was possibly the most epic headwear i have ever seen in my entire life it practically exuded a magical aura it made men want to be you and women want to love you and possibly men want to love you. Everybody wanted to love you, right? Your hat was an incredible, incredible fixture of the convention. Mojo Homo, uh, any plans to add the ability to create homebrew classes? Yes. That is something that is also on the roadmap. True Hollow, uh, are we going to get a character builder for sidekicks? We're going to follow Wizards of the Coast's lead here. And as soon as they have expanded rules for sidekicks, we are going to support whatever those expanded rules are. As it stands right now, they are simply stat blocks that have discrete advancement that has been detailed for them. And so uh, it's not appropriate for us to do a builder like that until we have more details. Uh, the effort and the complexity is not worthwhile again while these rules are not fully expanded yet. Professor Nightshade, what are we supposed to do with our sidekicks after level six or do sidekicks only go to level six? That unfortunately is a question for Jeremy Crawford or another uh, one of the designers on the Wizards of the Coast side. 
as they are currently implemented, that is the maximum level that uh, they are detailed to go. JP Gamer 3500, last dev update had races for players with all content unlocked, but I didn't see Genasi represented. Are they that unpopular? Or is it because the Elemental Evil Campaign Companion is not considered an unlockable player option? It is the... Um, Man, I always get former and latter mixed up. It is the former. I did that right. So they are pretty unpopular. Uh, you do have to admit also that that supplement is a pretty, um, you know, it's a pretty light supplement. It was very early in the addition of the game. I think a lot of it has to do with the relative popularity of um Bolo's Guide to Monsters, and then even some of the race options in Morden Canyon's Tome of Foes. Uh, Pepper MD. I've already submitted feedback on this, but can we get the feature to import our campaign information into the encounter builder regarding character levels? I have to manually set the number and level of my characters every time I build a new character. Uh, yes, that is absolutely expected behavior and it, it is on the list not exactly sure when it's coming but it's it's certainly at the uh, very near the top of the list for encounters uh Nuifondi, is there any mechanism to gift subscriptions not at this time but we will keep you updated professor nightshade some of the monsters have an ability called innate spellcasting psionics is this just to indicate that when, if psionics is ever released, we can expect psionics to be just another form of magic? Again, I am unfortunately not able to answer this question. I would have a lot of opinions on it myself, but I don't want to sow any kind of confusion out in the community there. That's something that's better for Mike or Jeremy. Aaron Lord, did Gen Con have access to decent sweet tea? Not really, no. Indiana is just like this in-between place that, you know, doesn't have the gumption to just say that they don't have sweet tea like the northern states do. But then, you know, when I ask for sweet tea, they give me some kind of crazy thing that came out of a fountain, you know, like a fountain, a uh, little, you know, that thing. And it's like Lipton or Nest tea or, you know, just one of those disgusting things and so, no, they did not have decent sweet tea, but I can make it for a few days without it sometimes. Uh, Professor Nightshade, uh, is there a way to get the backgrounds that are listed in custom backgrounds in alphabetical order? My OCD will thank you for that. Uh, we can see about doing that. Yeah, that probably should happen. So thanks for that feedback. Vox Kalina. Did you or the team suffer from con crud and are you all getting plenty of rest to recover from Gen Con? So true story. I don't have crud of any sort. I have just kind of lost my voice and I'm actually kind of getting to the end of my rope. I might even have to stop the stream a little bit early today, folks. So I apologize in advance for that. But um, so I kind of lost my voice a little bit. Um, but no, like no rest for the weary. I came home late Sunday night back to work. I, I had to do a little bit of work Sunday night because of all the work that I had to catch up on and then I just hit the ground running this week. So I am really hoping that this weekend is going to be the moment. It's going to be my moment. I'm going to play some, you know, video game. I don't do that hardly ever, but I'm going to play some video games or a game, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, there's gotta be something else that I'm going to do this weekend, but basically I'm going to just kind of, uh, chill out is ultimately what I'm looking at. But nay UK, is it possible that you could add classic adventures and products to D and D beyond updated to five E? Um, we would have to look into that. Uh, I think, is it Goodman games? That's doing a little bit of that right now. Um, I think it's Goodman games, but, uh, Ultimately, we are uh, looking for ways to expand our catalog, and I think that that's one that could work if we can get, uh, you know, if we can get Wizards of the Coast agreement. So I wouldn't say it's off the table, but it's not something that's currently in the works. 
MT history buff, has there been consideration of different character sheet formats and appearances like theme sheets or unlocks from pre-orders? Yes, that is something that we have discussed. It's something we would love to do. We've got a lot of ground to cover before we can start spending time on that level of customization, but it is something we would love to do um, and something to be honest that we would like to open up for the community to be able to do their thing with and be able to share those with others. Dzokvik, are there any plans to include uh, specific scrolls in the equipment list? Uh, basically adding a spell to a scroll. Yes, this is a classic, and this is one that if I knew how to write code, now I am like a CSS master, like straight up. Like people are snickering out there once the delay catches up, but like I am a CSS master at this point in time. I know how to use Google with the best of them, all right? But I do not know how to write any other types of, of code really. Um, but if I did, and if I had access to our depots and repository repos, yeah, the things that make code happen, if I had access to that, this is one of those that I would take nights and weekends to do something about, and it would have already been fixed. Because uh, it, it, it's such a small and minor thing that it's really hard when we are working on so many really big, impactful things. It's so hard for us to squeeze this in. But on, uh, and so on a personal level, I, I really want this one fixed, but, um, but it's not always the best and most meaningful thing for us to prioritize. Um, that was the long way to say it's on the list. And maybe one of these days I will whine enough that it makes sense to prioritize it. Lone Ranger RN, will the encounter builder have action links that will, I think that's a, Repeat. I don't know how that one squeezed into my magic application over here. Uh, Vaxum, favorite moment of Gen Con. Favorite moment. Wow, that's an interesting one. Uh, favorite moment. Really, really hard to say. Lots of favorite moments. Um, I think my favorite uh, th theme of Gen Con is just getting to touch base with so many uh, friends that are there, but then also just entirely new people. So it really is the people of Gen Con that make all of this worthwhile. And so getting to catch up with old friends and getting to meet new people uh, is, is always the highlight for me. Hard to distill that down to a single moment. I cheated on that one, sorry. Uh, JGK Smith, LCW. Why weren't you at your booth anytime I stopped by to say hello? Sorry, I, I had meetings and all kinds of things going on. So I was there some, so we were just ships passing in the night. Sorry about that. All right, Jay Stillfeather, would it be, uh, I think some words are missing here, but can we take earlier editions of D&D &D and update them? Uh, no. No, <laughs> that's a, you, you rarely ever get a flat out no from me, but that, this is a flat out no. No, we will not be uh, taking on that level of effort. Uh, when is the Xanathar's This Is Your Life? Oh, another question about This Is Your Life. That's helpful, though. It really is. If people are, are really wanting that and we see the demand, it can help us prioritize. Here you are again, GK. Uh, came in late. Was there any update on player-based content sharing, encounter building, or mobile character sheets? So if you did come in late, uh, player-based content sharing is already in. So that is in. And then encounter building, uh, homebrew monsters are in. Mobile is almost done. Mobile views are almost done for the encounter builder. We're headed towards beta pretty soon. And then mobile character sheets, no update um, yet, but activity is going on. Just a Carl. Oh my goodness, that is a great username. If your name is Carl, that is that is really, really nice. Bravo, just a Carl. Will the AL integration include a way to specify the plus book title per character? 
and filter content accordingly. I can't completely confirm exactly what that flow is going to be, but it is going to let you accomplish what you're talking about here for sure. Mel Amber zero one. What's your favorite character race combo that you wouldn't play yourself? Wow. That I wouldn't play myself. I would play like almost anything. Let's say, um, let's say life cleric for obvious mechanical reasons. Uh, I don't think that I would ever play a life cleric, even as strong as it is. Um, I, th I, I like the other domains too much. So I guess to explicitly answer the question, um, I would say uh, in race, we could go with um, dwarven. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it hill dwarf that gets the wisdom bonus? I think it is. Yeah. So hill, hill dwarf. Uh, life cleric is what we will answer there. Lord of the Gallows, are there plans to add auto currency math? 10 gold pieces minus three silver. Uh, potentially at some point in time, we've definitely talked about it. Uh, Moonshade 25, how's development coming on Adventures League character sheet creation support? Uh, development is not happening at all. Conceptualizing is, and it is something that would follow on to what we're doing with content management. So it's something that we want to do. Um, it's something that, you know, we've been waiting for a lot of, we have not started this because we're waiting for dust to settle with a lot of the pretty major AL changes that have come through. We don't want to be developing to a moving target. And so I think that we're starting to see that stuff uh, solidify a little bit more. I saw that, you know, milestone advancement is going to start to be used um, that makes things easier for us, uh, obviously. Um, so I think, um, you know, th this one's this one's definitely on deck out there somewhere. I'm going to answer one more question, and I'm going to have to go a little bit early today, folks. I apologize profusely, but I'm afraid if I keep this up, then I'm going to, you know, uh, have a, literally a bleeding throat. So we're, <laughs> we're going to do one more question here. Um and, uh, and we're going to call it a day. Reinhardt, love that one. Uh, regarding what you said earlier about magic items being given sparingly, when do you think a magic item should be given out and how often would you recommend? That's a really good question. And I think that for, uh, it, it's going to be whatever your group decides is the right uh, level. And if you're having fun, then of course you're doing it right. But uh, I think fun for me as a dungeon master or even as a player, um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I kind of have such a, an ingrained feel for the different tiers of play and how magic items, you know, are kind of recommended to be dispersed uh, through the, the dungeon master's guide there. And so I would expect that by the time I was, you know, fifth level, I probably have one or two uncommon magic items. Um, or um, yeah, yeah, uncommon magic items. And then um, I think that by the time I'm 11th level, you know, I might see a rare or something like that. And then I think by the time you get to 15th, you know, very rare. So uh, following that kind of thing. And um, I do like how fifth editions removed a lot of the Christmas tree effect that some of the uh, earlier editions, particularly third uh, had on the game. All right. That's going to do it for me today, folks. I am sure that by next week's dev update, I'm going to be fully recovered and my beautiful sultry tones will be completely normalized. I'm going to join you back for that. Hope everyone has a great day. Thanks a lot. Later, Gators.